Good morning, folks, and welcome. As we're going to, if you tuned in yesterday, you saw we're going to be uh, going through 1 Samuel. And we're still in 1 Samuel chapter 1. We're going to be doing verses 9 to the end of the chapter. 1 Ch Samuel chapter 1, 9 to the end of the chapter. Hope you all had a wonderful Labor Day yesterday. We had a fun time with students over at our house and um, they even went out and played in the rain. So, so it, was, it was fun. It was a rainy day yesterday. Uh, we had got some much needed rain. Uh, I think we got over two inches of rain. So that was good uh, to kind of replenish uh, and green up things some more. And uh, as I said, uh, we're going to be going through 1 Samuel and Kate and TJ will be doing Mondays and Wednesdays and I will be doing Tuesdays, Thursdays and Fridays but usually I have a guest I just haven't got my act together yet in uh, inviting people to take part in this so uh, pretty soon we'll be, I'll start to have guests as well um, on as we study 1st Samuel together so 1st Samuel chapter 1 uh, we went through 1 through 8 yesterday. You can check that out in the videos if you missed that one. And that's a good thing. All of our videos are online at uh, goodshepherdsc.org. So if you miss one, you can uh, uh, pretty much uh, you know, catch that on, on, on goodshepherdsc.org if you missed a video. All right, so uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1, starting in verse 9. We'll go to the end of the chapter. Now they had eaten and drunk in Shiloh, Hannah rose. After they had eaten and drunk in Shiloh, Hannah rose. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. And Hannah was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall touch his head. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was speaking in her heart, only her lips moved, and her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli took her to be a drunken woman, and Eli said to her, How long will you go on being drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered, No, my lord, I am a woman troubled in spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I've been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman, for all along I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation. Then Eli answered her, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition that you have made to him. And she said, let your servant find favor in your eyes. Then the woman went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord, and they went back to their house at Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah his wife, and the Lord remembered her. And in due time Hannah conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Samuel. Samuel for she said, I have asked for him from the Lord. The man Elkanah and all his house went up to offer to the Lord the yearly sacrifice and to pay his vow. But Hannah did not go up, for she said to her husband, As soon as the child is weaned, I will bring him, so that he may appear in the presence of the Lord and dwell there forever. Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Do what seems best to you. Wait until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord establish his word. So the woman remained and nursed her son until she weaned him. And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, and a skin of wine. And she brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. And the child was young. Then they slaughtered the bull, and they brought the child to Eli. And she said, O oh, my Lord, as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who was standing here in your presence praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me my petition that I made to him. Therefore I have lent him to the Lord as long as he lives. He has lent to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord there. Let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll dig in. Father God, 
I just ask that you would still our hearts now to hear from you, that your Holy Spirit would lead us and guide us. We're so thankful for your word. Your word is truth. We're so thankful that for these uh, events, this is, these historical, truthful events that have been passed down to us. Uh, may they be edifying to our own walk with you. May they um, instill in us a deeper sense of trust in you, in who you are, and uh, how you care for us, each and every one of us. So Lord God, draw us to yourself. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. So if you missed yesterday, uh, Hannah um, is married to Elkanah. The, each year they would go up and offer sacrifices. Eli is the high priest, uh, so those, these are the players. And uh, unfortunately, Elkanah had two wives, uh, Peninnah and Hannah. Peninnah had children, Hannah was barren. Hannah is deeply distressed over this. In fact, Peninnah needles her all the time, He's her, her rival just constantly reminding her of uh, her lack of a child. And this weighs on her tremendously. So that's where it picks up uh, in verse 9, uh, that all this is being weighed on her, and she is praying. I mean, just, just in deep distress and praying before the Lord. Um, you see that in verse 10. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. I, I, I don't think it's um, possible for us as, as men to understand how deeply crushed she was over her inability to have a child. And so this is weighing on her in a very, very deep way. And she makes a vow. So this is the first place we'll see in, in Samuel where a vow is made. And there's going to be several places in which vows are made. And so she makes a vow before the Lord. And it's interesting, if you look in the book of Numbers, I think it's Numbers uh, chapter 30, it talks about vows. And it talks about when a wife makes a vow. And that if the husband hears the vow and questions that, um, then that vow may be overridden. In other words... Uh, you know, he's saying, well, that was too hasty. You, you know, you, you should have rethought this or something along those lines. So uh, then they wouldn't be bound by the vow. But if the husband doesn't say anything uh, when the vow is being made and within the first day of, of that, uh, then that vow, that vow is binding to him as well. So Hannah is making a vow before the Lord. And she says... Um, in this vow, O Lord of hosts, if you indeed look on the affliction, so that she considers this lack of having a child an affliction of your servant, and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall touch his head. She's making a vow and saying, if a son is born to me, he will be given over to service to you. In other words, he will be devoted completely to you. I will give him up in adoption, in, in essence, to you, the Lord, for your use by you. And in one sense, all of our children that we have are on loan from the Lord. The Lord, everything is the Lord's. Um, so in one sense, for all of us, we should have that attitude that this child is really, it's not mine. It's not your child. It's not our child. This is a gift from the Lord. And the, our children are the Lord's. So she is going to, though, explicitly say he's going to be given over in service to the Lord all the days of his life. So this is the vow. It's a very, if you think about it, that's a very... Uh, intense vow to make. He's saying, after the child is born, after the child is weaned, he's going to be given over completely in service to the Lord. He's going to be out of my household, fully and completely in service to the Lord. So uh, Eli notices this woman praying, Hannah praying, and she's in deep in prayer, and her lips are moving, but there's no sound coming out. She's just 
in her heart, in her mind, she's praying to the Lord. She knows the Lord knows her. Uh, can, she doesn't have to verbally say anything. She's just deeply in prayer to the, with the Lord. And Eli uh, assumes, well, maybe she's drunk. And she's like, he, he, he chastises her. And I think there's a lesson in there for all of us uh, when we look at somebody and come to some conclusion without knowing the facts. He jumps to a conclusion, he jumps to a very negative conclusion, and how apt we are a lot of times in our judgments of people to jump to a negative conclusion. Eli does that, that was wrong. What Eli did, the priest did, jumped to conclusion that she's drunk, and she's like, no, I'm distressed. I am crushed, and I am deeply in prayer with the Lord. And so he changes his tune then uh, when he finds that out. Uh, when, he, when she says, don't regard me as worthless, I, I have great anxiety uh, and vexation. And, and verse 17, then Eli answered her, go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition that you have made to him. And she responds and says in verse 18, let your servant find favor in your eyes. And this, I think, is really amazing. Then the woman went her way and ate. Remember in the first eight verses that she was so distressed she couldn't even eat. She just would weep, uh, was so crushed by uh, our lack of having a child. She wouldn't eat. She wouldn't be comforted in any way. And it says, she, after this, after her prayer, and entrusting it to the Lord, everything to the Lord, she went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. How long we may hold on to things in our life and allow them to, uh, you know, just kind of tear into the peace that we would have Allow, allow these things that we worry about that are weighing on, our, on us to affect our sleep, to affect our demeanor. And uh, I think there's a lesson in here for all of us to pray, to trust God. He cares for us. He loves us. He cares for Hannah. He loved Hannah. He cares for you. He loves you to give it over to the Lord and to have a sense of peace in our life. Sometimes it's hard for us to do. We want to hold on to these things. And we, we, uh, we lose sleep over it. We get worked up. We, uh, you know, anxiety is kind of uh, pressing its way in on us. Uh, but to give this, everything over to the Lord. And so they rose, it says in verse 19, they rose early in the morning and worshiped. So her husband is a part of this, right? So Elkanah. Uh, they rose and they worship. He knows what's going on. He knows the vow that's been made. And he is in agreement with this, this vow. And so they went back to their house in Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife. That's a way of saying he had sexual relations with his wife, Hannah. And the Lord remembered her. Of course, the Lord remembered her before this uh, as well. But this was the Lord's timing on all of this that uh, they have come to the conclusion of, hey, this child is going to be dedicated to the Lord and service to the Lord. And then Hannah conceived and bore a son, named him Samuel. Samuel, uh, I asked for him from the Lord. That's, uh, so she gives him the name Samuel. And so Elkanah, her husband, continues the yearly going up to offer sacrifices uh, and uh, is in the presence of Eli, but Hannah stays back at first because the child is not weaned. So she's still breastfeeding the child. And then uh, as uh, the child grows and is weaned, she returns. And now she dedicates him to service to the Lord. She's giving him over. Uh, it's interesting, though, the wording that is used here. Uh, when she, well, she first of all, she tells, tells, tells Eli, the high priest, I was the woman who was praying there that you thought was drunk, but I was praying to the Lord and the Lord has blessed us with a child. And so I'm here now, the child is weaned, he's being dedicated to service to the Lord. And so um, he, she says that in verse 26, 
uh, in verse 27, she says, For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me my petition that I made. Therefore, I have lent him to the Lord as he, as long as he lives, I have lent him to the Lord. That's kind of a interesting, it's hard uh, words to translate. Uh, I'm not sure what it says in another translation. I'd be interested. You know, you can put that in your comments. What it says in verse 28, where it says in the ESV, Therefore I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he has lent to the Lord. The literal translation would be, uh, is, make him one asked of the Lord. I have made him one asked of the Lord. Uh, in other words, he's giving him over to service to the Lord for her for the lifetime. It's not lending for a period of time. It's, uh, you know, literally, as it says here, make him one asked of the Lord. Uh, so it's kind of a hard thing to translate uh, into into English. So that's what they pick. They pick the word Lent in here. But as again, I'm curious as what maybe your other translations say, and you can put that in the comments. That would be helpful for people. Um, and uh, then he worshiped the Lord there. And I'm, and I'm guessing that is uh, uh, Samuel, even as a young child, who's just been weaned, is worshiping the Lord. And so children can worship the Lord. And I think we, we uh, you know, don't comprehend that sometimes, how deeply a child can love the Lord and worship the Lord, even a very small child, uh, and their relationship that they have with the Lord. Uh, I think, you know, as Jesus said, unless you... Uh, are like this little child. You cannot enter the kingdom of God. This child, a childlike worship of trust in the Lord, completely uh, giving themselves uh, into the hands of the Lord, very trusting. That is the way that we, that's the kind of faith that Jesus is looking for from us, that we would entrust ourselves completely to him and give ourselves over to him and worship him in that fashion. Hannah trusted the Lord, trusted that the Lord would accomplish uh, these great things. She went away with peace in her heart. As we entrust our lives to the Lord and know that he loves us and cares for us, we too can have a peace that transcends all understanding, understanding even when there are a lot of things that are going on in our life that are difficult, that are hard. God is with you. He loves you with an everlasting love. So, uh, I think that's all I have for today, but just think about how that would apply to your own life uh, and maybe the areas of your life where you find it difficult uh, to entrust those things to, to, to the Lord. You're still holding on to them um, tightly. You think you have to solve everything yourself and you have a difficulty re releasing your grip on them. Uh, just think about that for your own life and, and um, how God loves you and he wants you to release that grip and turn those over to him and give them into the hands of Jesus who loves you with an everlasting love. So let's go before the Lord in prayer. Uh, Father God, we're thankful for this uh, time together. We're thankful for your word. Your word is truth. We're thankful for examples of people like Hannah who entrusted herself to you in a very traumatic and um, vexing circumstance, as she says, um, and how she found peace when she turned these things over to you. Uh, Lord God, there's people right now, uh, there's been times in my life when I've held on to things and caused stress uh, and anxiety uh, and then finally turned them over to you and found that peace. There are some that are listening right now that have stress and anxiety in their life. Uh, and I pray that they would find the, uh, the faith to turn all things over to you and that you would give to them that peace that transcends all understanding. Thank you, Lord God, for guarding our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Savior. In his name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great day.